Hey everyone, welcome back to another Harvest Moon A Wonderful Life video. This isn't another 30 days or 100 days or whatever, it's not in that line of videos. It's just a video that goes into further semantics of the 100% criteria. So in my first video, I only outlined the broad categories since I knew it was going to be a long one. So this video will fill in the gaps and give you exactly what I'm attempting to accomplish. The reason for this video existing in the first place is, one, something I can link to in the live stream if anyone asks me, hey, what's 100% of Harvest Moon A Wonderful Life It doesn't exist? And two, in case any of you want to try 100% run for yourself before the remake comes out. I establish all these goals in a text document that's available in my Discord channel. So if you want the same checklist I use, feel free to join the Discord and download it. That link is in the description. So with all that being said, let's get into it. Starting with the farm tasks, getting all the extensions is step one. This includes the four items slash buildings, the pond, seed maker, milking room, and food production room. I say items because the seed maker and pond really aren't buildings, even though they're classified in the same area. Um, obviously, Daryl can give you a seed maker for free, but if you want to purchase all of them, it's about 63,000 G. So the only roadblock here is money, which won't be an issue later on in the run. It's just something I need to get to. After the extensions are the tools. There are 22 tools available in A Wonderful Life, four of which we start out with, leaving 18 that need to be purchased or gifted to us. The regular and light versions of the Sickle and Ho must be purchased from the ledger, and the strange and weird versions are gifts from Gustafa, Dr. Hardy, Tim, and Vesta. The regular and large watering cans are purchased from the ledger, and the W watering can is gifted by Romana. Wool shears and clippers are purchased from the ledger, and Wally gives us wool clippers. The brush, fishing pole, and goat milker are all purchased from Van, and the final item, fishing rod G, is gifted to us by Galen in year two. Now into the big boys, we got crops and trees. My favorite part of A Wonderful Life is probably the farming mechanics. A lot of people like to drag on them because they're not as interesting, they don't make as much money, there's not as much original seeds compared to Stardew Valley or even the later Harvest Moon games. But the novelty comes from hybrid crops. This video won't get into the nuances of crop hybrids, you know, how to make them, when to plant them, etc, etc. But I'll describe how many we need to achieve the 100%. There are 60 crops and 24 trees that can be utilized in A Wonderful Life. Of those 60 crops, there are the original eight that you can purchase from Vesta. You know, your tomatoes, your carrots, your turnips, just the regular crops that you can buy from Vesta's farm. There's 28 second generation hybrids that you can get from combining those eight. And then there are 24 third generation crops from combining some of those second generation hybrids. Of the 24 fruit trees, there are five first generation, 10 second generation, and nine third generations. That means that a 100% run will see at least 84 different crop and tree fruits being grown and sold if you wanna make selling them part of the challenge. Another big one are the recipes. There are 87 recipes split into five categories, 18 salads, 14 hors d'oeuvres, 17 entrees, 10 soups, and 28 desserts. A lot of these recipes require multiple second and third generation crops, so that just increases the amount of farming that's needed. And finally, to round out the farming category, we have the what I call quote, full barn. At some point, we need to have a dog, cat, horse, sheep, goat, yes, we need to buy the goat, chicken, duck, and all four types of cow. Normal, marble, brown, and star. I decided not to include bulls, since they don't provide anything outside of a free miracle potion, but if you guys want me to include them, let me know in a comment. Finally arriving at the village tasks, befriending all the characters is first on our list. Some characters come and go, others will only arrive later in the game, so making friends ASAP is very important. I could go through all the characters in detail, you know, their likes, dislikes, where to find them at certain parts of the day, you know, all that stuff, but that's not super necessary for this video. But again, if you ever want to see a certain video from me like that, just let me know and I'll do my best to make one. After making friends, we had the festival cutscenes. Unfortunately, A Wonderful Life is light on festivals, something that they're going to address in the remake, and I'm super excited about that. But there's only four in the original version, one for each season. These include the New Year's Festival, the Summer Music Festival, Fall Harvest Festival, and the Winter Starry Night Festival. On the topic of cutscenes, we have the quote random events. These are cutscenes that can be triggered by becoming friends with people, having a certain building, or leaving your house at a certain time. 
There are 32 total random events, but only 28 of them are guaranteed. If you marry Celia, you can see 30. If you marry Nami or Muffy, you can see 31. The Bachelorette Heart events have a similar quirk, as some of the cutscenes you can see with Celia and Nami serve as alternative proposals. There are 16 total heart events, Celia has 6, and Muffy and Nami have 5. In my criteria, to get 100%, you only need to have seen 13 cutscenes that aren't alternative proposals or lead to one. For example, if you get Celia's arranged marriage cutscene, which is her second, fourth heart event, it's almost guaranteed you'll get her confession scene, which locks you in to either breaking her heart or choosing her as your bachelorette, which I don't want to force anybody into that scenario, and I'm not going to force myself into it. Wrapping up the village tasks are the extra items. There are eight of them, but I'm fairly certain that three of them are impossible to get in the original edition. These are the alarm clock, ruby spice, tartan, a painting from Cody, and a vase from Van. The three that I'm pretty sure we can't get are a necklace from Flora, a set of drums from Gustafa, and sheet music from Lumina. I think those are special edition only. Of course, I'm going to try to get them, see if I can get them to trigger, but if I can't, then there you go. Our final category are the miscellaneous tasks. The first of which is catching every fish. There are eight fish, each having a normal and big size. So that means we need to get 16. Then there are the dig side items, of which there are 18 in total. There are 12 between chapters 1, 2, and 3, and 6 between chapters 4 and 5, with chapter 6 having nothing new. Along with those items are the five tablets, one of which can be found per chapter. Similar to the dig side items, there isn't an additional tablet in chapter 6. It just repeats all the dig items from chapter 5. With the dig site completed, the next step is purchasing the four child toys from Van. These include the ball, car, blocks, and teddy bear. The next section of the miscellaneous tasks are acquiring all the music discs. There are 11 total discs, and we start the game with two. So there are nine to collect. With that being said, another hiccup of the original edition is that you can only collect records by connecting to Friends of Mineral Town using the Game Boy Advance link. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't have a Game Boy Advance. I don't have a copy of Friends of Mineral Town, and I don't have the thing to link it to the GameCube. But to rectify this, I'll be completing all the prerequisites to get the records, and I'm going to count that as good enough. I'll see if I can do it at some point during the stream, but no promises. Eight of the nine records are collected through befriending town characters, and the final one is received by winning 10 games of territory capture against Patrick or Casey, which will be hard enough, so I think you can give me a pass on this one. The final challenge to 100% is completing all the special edition achievements. There are 23 of these achievements, which I'll put a link into the description of all of them. Some of these are only possible in the special edition as they require cutscenes or mechanics that don't exist in the original version. I will be completing all the achievements that can be achieved in the original edition. Don't you worry. There's some cutscenes, there's some things that are just not possible on the GameCube, and that's fine. I got them noted. Don't worry about it. And that's it. Completing all these tasks is what makes up my 100% criteria. I think it's important to include a quick caveat here. I did all this research independently by going through various YouTube videos, the Fogu.com website, the Harvest Moon Wikipedia, a lot of blog posts, and it's all intermixed with my own experience with game. So some of this list may be missing some things, or maybe the information is even inaccurate. And if that's the case, I want you guys to let me know. Because more than anything, I want this run to be valid. I want it to be as close to 100% of the original edition as possible. And two, I want to be able to include everything in one list in case somebody wants to do it in the future. Or, you know, they're feeling nostalgic and it's a nice little challenge that they have everything that they need. And on that note, a quick shout out to everyone at r slash harvestmoon and r slash story of seasons for helping me shop this list. Like I said, I did everything myself. I came up with the list and I went over to the subreddit and said, hey, is this 100% of a wonderful life? And a couple of people said, yeah, looks like you got everything. And that's why I started the challenge in the first place. They also let me post my video there. So again, shout out to the mods. Love you, respect you, appreciate it. And speaking of thanks, I also wanted to thank everyone who watched and liked the first video of my 100% run. This includes everyone who subscribed, 
turned on notifications, followed me on my Twitter page and my Twitch channel, and those who joined the Discord from that video. I never expected to get over 100 views at all, let alone in the first week. And we already surpassed that, which is incredible. And I just, I, I don't know what to say. It's an awesome feeling that I can start a video like this one with, hey everyone, and feel like I'm actually talking to someone. I swear when I started the first one, I made sure not to include that because there's nobody there. There is no subscribers. So it was just a really cool feeling that I could actually start a script with those two words. Of course, if you like this video, the best way to support me is to subscribe, like the video, and enable notifications. This 100% run is going on right now on twitch.tv slash jack.goose, and those streams are announced on Twitter and Discord, so feel free to follow me there if you want to get up-to-date notifications on when the stream goes live. Again, those links will be in the description. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you want to see any additional Harvest Moon content. I know the 100% run is a challenge and it's something that I'm going to make future videos on. But if there's anything you want to see, please let me know and I will do my best to make a video on it. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. And I hope I'll see you again soon.